Hey, this is Joe from Home Studio Corner. There's a common mistake people make when they get into home recording when it comes to using reverb. It's not even a mistake per se, there's just a better way to do it. And I'm gonna show you that today. But first, I guess we need to answer the question, what is reverb? Reverb is an effect that can take a dry vocal like this, as long as I can remember, and make it sound like this, as long as I can remember. And what people will do is they'll take a reverb plugin and put it on a vocal, and they'll adjust the mix knob, which is this knob right here that lets us adjust between the dry signal and the wet signal, much like a guitar reverb pedal, so we can dial that sound in a little bit more. As long as I and they may find something they really like. Then they'll say, okay, now I want to listen to the guitars, and I think I want them to have some reverb as well. So they start adding reverb to everything. So here's a guitar. As long as I can remember. So they think, well, that's too dry. I need a reverb. So they add a reverb plug in there, and they adjust that to taste. And then as more guitars come in, there's five guitars in this track, they'll add a reverb plugin to each of the tracks. And it makes sense. I want each of these to have reverb. It makes sense that I would add reverb to them. And then let's say there's a shaker track like this as well. That's where it ends. Uh, if I go back a little bit, you'll hear it. And they think, I want reverb on there too, so you add reverb. A little bit of reverb on your shaker. Anyway, this is the normal approach. I see sessions like this all the time where folks will send me their sessions and it will have a lot of reverb plugins on individual channels. Now, if you do this, I'm not saying you're bad or you're gonna get bad mixes by default. However, I do have three problems with this approach to using reverb. The first problem is it's too much work. I mean, look at this session. It's only seven channels, but I've already got seven reverb plugins. And if I decide mm, there's too much reverb on the vocal, I've got to open up this plugin and turn the mix knob down. And then if I decide, oh, there's too much reverb on the guitars, guess what? I've got to open each of those guitar reverb plugins and turn the mix knob down. That is tedious. My second problem with this is it eats up a lot of CPU power. Especially if you bought a nice reverb plugin, they sound amazing, but they use a lot of processing. And if you're using not one, but seven or more, you're gonna see a lot of your processing power being eaten up by something that could be handled with just one reverb plugin. I'll show you how to do that in just a second. The third problem I have with this is it just doesn't sound as good. Right now I've got a reverb plugin on this vocal channel and it sounds like this. As long as I can. Now, I want to add EQ to that. I want to EQ my vocal. That's a pretty normal thing to want to do. Well, guess what? Any EQ moves I make are applying to both the vocal and the reverb. As long as I've known you, I've always been too free. And let's say we decided, hmm, it's a little muddy, the, the reverb's a little muddy. Well, if we want to go in and try to remove that low end, no, you never. Well, the reverb's not muddy anymore, but now the vocal is super thin. That's not going to work in the mix either. When we do it like this, we can't separate the dry vocal from the reverb sound. And that to me is the biggest problem. The solution to all of this is to use a single reverb pluggle. Uh, pluggle. <laughs> The solution to all of this is to use a single reverb plugin on its own channel and then use sends on the other channels to feed that signal into the reverb. Here's how you set it up. First thing I want to do is remove all of these reverb plugins because we're going to simplify this a lot. Next, I'm going to grab my reverb plugin and drag it into an empty spot. And Studio One is going to add what's called an effects channel. These are also known as auxiliary channels or buses. They're places that I don't record audio to this like a regular audio track, but it's a place where I can pass audio through. So for example, I can send some of my vocal here to get some reverb on it, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna put the reverb plug in here on this channel and I'm gonna set it to 100% wet. That means I'm gonna hear all the dry signal of the vocal on this channel and all the reverb signal on this channel. Now, how do I get the vocal there? If I hit play now, do I have any reverb? Is long. No, I don't. Here's what I have to do. I have to use a send. Uh, these are sometimes called, they're almost always called sends, regardless of what 
uh, software you use. So I'm gonna hit plus here and I'm gonna say, send this vocal to the room reverb. Now this isn't the output for the channel. My vocal is still going to the main output. This is kind of like an extra output. This is like an auxiliary send on an analog mixer where I can send the singer more of his vocal in the monitors, except instead of doing that, I'm sending some of this vocal to the reverb. And this is my volume control for that send. If I have it turned all the way down, we have no reverb. As long as I... And as I turn it up, we get reverb. As long as I can remember, I was never... And this is a perfect example of what I wanted to show you. What do you hear, aside from the reverb that comes in, what do you notice about the overall tone of this vocal when I add the reverb in? As long as I can remember, I was never free. You know what I noticed? That reverb has this kind of muddiness to it. The vocal sounds almost kind of mixed already. As long as I... I mean, it may need a little more EQ, but it's a nice clean vocal. And it's not muddy or woofy or like too warm in the low end, but with this reverb, it is. Do you know why that's happening? Because the reverb is adding its own frequencies and it's adding in that muddiness. Well, guess what? Now that we have these separated out on different channels, I can put an EQ plug-in after the reverb and I can adjust what that reverb sounds like without messing with the original vocal. I can do something like this and roll off all those nasty low frequencies. And now I get this sound. As long as I can remember, I was never afraid of the dark. Probably exaggerated it to make a point, but now you can see the vocal by itself with no reverb still sounds the same. As long... And then the reverb over here by itself sounds like this. As long as I can remember, And then together we get this nice blend of a dry signal and a nice reverberant reverb. As long as I can remember, I was never afraid of the dark. But it doesn't stop there. Now we can add some reverb to our guitars as well. Let's just uh, copy this reverb send over. We're gonna send some of each of these guitars over to that reverb. Now this looks a lot like what I did before when I copied reverb plugins, with the key difference being, I have all my reverb settings over here and I can come adjust that sound with one click, make any adjustments to the reverb that I want, or open up this EQ and EQ the reverb as much as I want. But when it comes to how much of each of these tracks is going to the reverb, I can adjust those really easily over here. Here's what that all sounds like. As long as I can remember I was never afraid of the dark As long as I've known you Now I can go into this mix, I can do EQ, compression, anything I want on the individual guitar tracks, the individual vocal tracks, and I know that what I'm hearing is just that vocal and some reverb on top, but they're not intermeshed in a way that's not helpful. And I can just listen to them, just EQ that guitar without it affecting what the reverb is sounding like and vice versa. Hope that was helpful for you. If you've fallen into this trap of just dragging a bunch of reverb plugins into your session, try doing it this way next time. It'll save you a lot of time and it might make your mixes sound better. By the way, if you haven't signed up for my email newsletter, that's the only place to get my weekly insider emails. And one way to sign up for that is to get my five-step mixing guide at fivestepmix.com. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.